Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Livesey, Senior VP of Solutions Engineering here at Ariaka. Welcome to a new series called Sassy in 5. When I say Sassy in 5, I mean Sassy in 5 minutes. And I'm truly excited about this new way in which we want to educate on the fast changing environment in the networking and security world. At Ariaka, we do things different. We like to challenge current thinking and defy convention. This happens in many ways. The way we like to share best practices, the way we like to be thought leaders, even the way we architect our SASE solution to ensure we give you all the security and the networking enablement that your business needs with minimum cost, complexity, and effort. If you're like me, you probably don't have time to sit down and listen to a 45 minute or an hour long presentation. And it's hard to remember everything. Some key points will certainly get lost in the noise. That's why we've come up with a new method of being thought leaders. We all know SASE is a journey. And with all journeys, there are many paths to the same outcome. With SASE, there are many paths to the same outcome, but there are also paths to different outcomes as well. We wanna help shed some light on the different paths, the different results, and the pitfalls to watch out for along the way. Our first episode of SASE and 5 is gonna focus on why SASE. We'll look at the business reasons behind why this tech trend is here to stay. What's driving organizations to adopt SASE? And why is there so much momentum behind doing this now? However, before we look into answering these questions, I want to start by giving you a preview of what will be coming in future episodes. In this educational series, we'll share the four most common challenges organizations are, are facing when implementing SASE. And like any journey, there'll be some bumps along the way. So we'll share what to expect. We'll talk about the difference between best of breed SASE and the newly coined term unified SASE, discussing which strategy is best for your organization based on your goals and objectives. We'll discuss the 10 critical success factors that will get you to the right result as you build out your SASE program. What are the nine building blocks to success? Where do you start? Which building block comes first and which ones follow? Each episode will focus on answering these questions and other questions like these. We want everyone to understand what the road to success looks like. So we'll be sharing knowledge, which will only take five minutes each time. Short, sharp, and concise information which you can share with your colleagues and use to make the right decisions for your business. So why SASE? Well, there's been a seismic shift in the way companies work today. And this new way has stretched the old hub and spoke architecture to its limits, making it inefficient and obsolete. For decades, networking and security were siloed departments operating independently of one another, working together only when required. This inevitable convergence of networking and security was a given. It had to happen. But Gartner analysts were the first in 2019 to structure the framework today known as SASE, Secured Access Service Edge. This convergence was accelerated as a result of the pandemic. Adoption of cloud exploded. Application behaviors changed overnight. The use of tools like Teams and Zoom and organizations were faced with the challenge of securing and optimizing those now cloud-based workloads and user experience for a 100% remote, remote workforce. With all this overnight change came a challenge that IT had never seen before. Along comes SASE. The security and networking framework once visioned in 2019 is today incredibly relevant to address all of the new normal challenges of IT. Security may very well lead the charge, but not at the expense of network optimization and performance centered around user experience, productivity, and optimization. New areas like artificial intelligence and machine learning will have a profound impact in the transformation execution as well. Exploiting these new technologies will bring a new set of challenges as big data volumes will increase. These drivers for change have created a new problem and the question is how do you balance two non-negotiables to give the business what they need and demand without compromising anything? Well, Ariak has come up with a zero trust and a zero compromise solution that we're excited to introduce in a future episode. Thanks for listening and be on the lookout for our next SASE in 5 when I'll share the four most common pitfalls when implementing SASE.